Agatha Christie's The Mousetrap. In my opinion, a second-rate murder mystery. <laughs> Not that I've seen it, you understand? But it's a whodunit. You've seen one, you've seen them all. You know the drill. An interminable prologue in which all the key players are introduced. You get a sense of the world they inhabit, and then the most unlikable character gets bumped off. There's been a murder. Cue the entrance of a world-weary detective who comes in and pokes his nose around, talks to witnesses, takes a couple of wrong turns, and then gathers all the suspects in the drawing room and points the finger at the least likely chump because of the way the guy, I don't know, ties his shoelaces. Now you've seen our play, you're an accomplice to murder. And so we ask you to remember that it is very much in your interest not to tell a soul outside of this theater who done it. But what do I know? The limeys, they just lap it up. The play's a smash hit, not to mention a cash cow. And right there is the milkmaid in chief, Petula Spencer. This lavish affair is a party to celebrate the 100th performance. No wonder film producer John Wolfe wants to turn the play into a major motion picture. Here he is now in the arms of his slightly paranoid wife. Since the death is close at hand, it's probably just a draft. This is where I come in. Leo Kopernik's the name, big shot Hollywood director hired to make the film adaptation marginally less boring than the play. <laughs> Easier said than done when the writer is a giant pompous ass, Mervyn Cockanorris. I say, you're rather tall. Am I? I haven't really thought about it, to be honest. Is that what happened here? Sort of, I had a bit of an accident backstage. Sure, he's educated and he knows a lot of $10 words, but it's like he's never seen a film before let alone try to rate one. Oh, Babadin. Kia Kista. No one important. Oh, my feminine best. I'm to get a speech. You know, at times, you do rather overdo the temperamental Neapolitan. It's a nice jacket. Say, why don't you scare me up a real drink, will you, kid? Like a pint of rye or bourbon or motor oil, if you have to. Yeah. Up to it now, huh? In England, that actually counts as good service. I was stationed here during the war, and if anything, the locals are more uptight now than when they had the Luftwaffe overhead. Mervyn? Shouldn't you be home? I thought we had a deadline. I thought so too. But then our esteemed director tore up the screenplay and told me to start all over again. He's of the opinion that a modern audience will walk out in protest if they're not served at least one violent death in the opening frames. Suffice to say, we are no longer on speaking terms. Merv! London's most sensitive writer. <laughs> How was the mousetrap, huh? Did they catch the guy who did it? I will not stand here and be insulted. Well, I guess he's gonna go over there and be insulted. Ah, uh, what passes for glamour in these parts? Sheila Sim and Dickie Attenborough. Kid likes the sound of his own voice. Even money, he makes a speech. I suppose I have to say a few words. Not too many. Well, when have I ever? Our wedding, remember? You always miss a honeymoon. Mm. Uh, darlings, you're ever so kind. I'd like to ask you all to raise a metaphorical bat to the old pavilion. The mousetrap is a hundred, not out. Cheers. I tell you what else is a hundred, not out. Cthulhu's mother. The old coot's just crazy about seafood. Now they just brought out more langoustines. Excuse me, I just need to deal with that. Mother, please. Uh, You've had quite enough. Now, I'm not one to tell tales out of school, but the girls over here, 
They go wild for an American accent and the promise of a pair of nylons. But the husbands... Right, I think it's time someone taught you a lesson. They're not so easily won over. It's only fair to warn you that I learned to box in the RAF. Yeah? Well, I learned to fly a plane in Gleason's gym. All of which explains, in an admittedly roundabout fashion, how I come to be in the theater's backstage area in need of a change of clothes. Hello? Yes, I should have seen this coming. It's always the most unlikable character gets bumped off. It's a whodunit. You've seen one, you've seen them all. 